and today we are recording from the undisclosed location and we have a special guest, Kommissar Binkov. Hi everyone, and how are you? I'm fine, and how are you? Well, I'm a little bit green, but uh, everything else is pretty good. The Thanks channel is doing fine, and I think your channel is also doing a fantastic job. Yeah, everything's working out for us, yeah? Yeah, we can take over the world soon enough. Yeah, it should be on. One or two years. Yeah, give or take a decade, yeah. So, what uh, brings you here, and, or what brings me here? I brought some questions from my patrons for you. And Gavin Bergsma asked, how is the animator of Netherlands vs Belgium video doing in the Gulag after screwing up the Dutch flag? Which animator? Oh, I see you have already taken care of him. Yeah, there is no problem anymore. That's, you know, water under the bridge. Excellent. Where he drowned. Colin O'Banion, I hope I got that right, asked, How do you even begin to research the necessary stuff for a conflict? Oh. It seems pretty detailed in numbers, types of equipment, and it, he also finds it very impressive. Well, uh, when we pick a topic, which isn't that hard, uh, then it's just a matter of finding various sources, which are either some publications, which I will not, um, you know, advertise right yeah. now, uh, or there's actually a bunch of publicly uh, available things on websites of uh, various armed forces and various uh, government white papers, defense uh, military white papers. There's really a bunch of stuff. One just needs to, you know, have time and go through it. And there's a whole lot of uh, open source information, even on the number of various military hardware and soldiers and whatnot. So it just takes time and effort, really. Yeah, I know. Reading up in U.S. Army field manuals and stuff like that. Yeah, there's there, quite there's a lot of information out there. All of that is accessible either online or you can find it in libraries. And, yeah. The reading is the hard part. Yeah, it, it does time. take time. That's that's why the videos take weeks to come out because you know uh, research takes like a week, and then to animate the video takes two more weeks or, or longer, so yeah, it's a very labor-intensive process. Excellent, thank you. And the next question is from Shay Binder. Can you bring an example of this from the Cold War? Uh, an example of what? Ah, I think he wants... Um, you already did some stuff in the future, like China versus the United States, okay. but some um, Cold War examples, like United States versus... Oh. Um, so what you mean, like in yeah, 1981? That is absolutely. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry. That is absolutely a topic we will uh, have a video on, but it's also a huge topic to research, and it's going to take time. And it's probably. I mean, we can more or less confirm a NATO versus Warsaw Pact video will happen at some point, and it's probably going to be a late Cold War because there's most information to be found on that period because like 50s and 60s it's very hard to find precise information on uh, organization of uh, uh, battle of on, or of battle of yeah yeah as on, you on, on both sides, yeah i can confirm that because i also tried to look into the cold war recently and i had also quite some problems finding information on the soviet union yeah it's good it's very just you know, a bunch of approximations and what West thought the Soviets had and whatnot, and actually getting Soviet information is so far brewing, almost impossible to find. Is there anything else? Yeah, there's one final question. Alexander wants to know: Do you have any military background? Well, the, that's confidential information, isn't it? Well. I will pass it to him. Yeah. So we don't need to send more people to the gulag, right? Yes, and let's drink on that. Well, uh, <clears throat> I don't drink this. Ah, oh, yeah. And that's just, you know, nah. I drink better stuff, so I'm sorry. I hope you're not offended. 
Not really. Yeah. Oh, uh, I wanted to ask you one thing, if that's okay. Are you a communist? No. No, seriously. Are you? No. Ah, uh, too bad, but I guess not everyone is perfect. Well, anyway, um, uh, do you have like any plans for your YouTube channel? Uh, of course, to make it grow to, say, 500,000 subscribers, you need some other kind of uh, videos and topics, or do you think you're gonna, you know, remain uh, with the, uh, let's say, World War II warfare, and what's your most popular topic, I don't know. Yeah, I already have some strategy planned out, basically. I I'm will doing less videos of before the Napoleonic Wars. I think I will, the main date will be Napoleonic Wars and then to actual current um, conflicts and everything. Right yeah. now I'm looking into um, the Chinese and the US Navy strategy and operational concepts in the South China Sea and everything around there. I think it's similar probably to your video on China versus the USA. And also, so it will be more present and also Cold War and up to Napoleon. But of course there will be something like um, Prussia too, like Frederick II the Great um, and probably the Siege of Vienna or both Sieges of Vienna. So what about some hypothetical wars or even future wars, something like that? I'm thinking about doing alternative history, one which I'm also researching a bit now, also with Bismarck. If the Luftwaffe would have been able to win the Battle of Britain with certain arrangements, but not like heavy bombers, but more like if they did more research, for instance, and look how ineffective the bombing actually was. Because I found like some information that they bombed, strategically bombed um, near Paris. And we know from the Battle of Britain that actually most didn't work out, the bombing already, and they could have researched that to see actually that the strikes were ineffective. In yeah, Paris. but wouldn't the end result would still be the same, even if they won the Battle of Britain? Well, uh, they, they also misunderstood the strategic air defense of, the, of Great Britain, and they never realized that this was a com complete uh, command and control infrastructure. And if they would have understood that, and I probably could have understood that if they had proper intelligence, so it's not completely out of question, they could have focused attacks on this, and this would have probably created more problems for the RAF, because the fighter command could always send up the planes where the bombers were coming. And if they don't have the infrastructure, if the radar or some other stuff is damaged, then they would have to resort to patrols, which of course limits the ability to focus on one point and force concentration which would put more stress on the pilots, on the equipment, and also makes the, the, True. the combat air but, patrol less effective. But, I mean, they would have neutralized RAF for some time, and then what happens when Operation Barbarossa starts? I mean, it's mostly focused on the Battle of Britain itself, not I Sea see. Lion and not Barbarossa. Yes, it's just the, a theoretical question. The would British it be, nobody would have it be possible? <laughs> yeah, I mean, also with these changes, I, I don't know yet if it would make any difference in the end, because the time frame for the Battle of Britain is rather short, and so it, it's more like would these changes have made a difference, or what would be the best strategy? And I think the other strategy would be to focus more on attacking the ports in combination with the submarine warfare. And we're back. No, we never actually left, so we were here the whole time in this super secret bunker, which may look a little bit fancy, but it's actually, what, 20 feet underground, right? At least. At least. So but we... You no, cannot not, get us. Yeah. You hear me? Never. We don't want to give any information if you need a bunker buster or not. Yes, the gulags are already, you know, full as they are. Are you good with guns? Not really. I have basic education from, from boot camp, from my military service, and I think I once shot the clock. Russia or USA? Who should lead the world? USA. But I, I didn't ask like who will lead, but who should? USA. Still? Yeah, okay. definitely. USA or China? USA. What's wrong with, with Chinese? Nothing wrong with Chinese. 
I just like freedom. Okay. I hope President Trump also approves this video. So how did you become interested in all this, you know, history and strategy in general? It's quite interesting because I don't really know. I already started as a teenager in a way. And after university, basically for almost 10 years, I didn't do anything with military history. And then I moved back to Austria with my channel growing and growing. And I met uh, a cousin of mine and I talked to her and I shared what I was doing. And she was like, oh, you already liked it as a teenager. And I was like, really? And then I remember. And so in, in hindsight, it's like, it's quite obvious because I was always interested in history. I mean, I studied history, but also computer science. And, and actually, we didn't have much military history courses. So around 2006, 2007, I stopped being interested in that and going more into the workforce. But then in 2016, the video happened, basically, because it was not really planned to do the German tank production video in World War II in this week. Originally, I think I wanted to do just an infographic and then so became are, a video. Are you telling me the whole, all of your channel just uh, started like accidentally? You didn't plan to have this kind of... Actually, I had several plans for different channels and already had a PowerPoint channel. But yeah, this military history visualized was was basically a coincidence in a, in a way. I had some other stuff planned, like Touching History was the original title, which I wanted to do, where I, I see. but I don't want to disclose those ideas because okay. maybe I'm, I'm coming back to that. But the military history aspect actually was, yeah, that was... And, and you didn't like read books on history for like past 10 years before that? No, basically the, since 2000. Seven mostly. I didn't do any much in history. So basically, as you can see in the early, my early videos are pretty bad. I have to research again, and and what I said in one of my videos basically this is military history 101. What I'm doing, I'm learning new stuff and then putting out the videos, and in the future with that knowledge I will build better videos. So and my my key strength I think is communication actually and not military history. But I'm really good in retrieving information and then putting it out in a way that people can relate to it and that it makes sense. And this is also the engineering approach because I want to understand stuff and I want to understand uh, and I want to communicate the meaning of that information that I got. I see. I think it would be a useful addition to Bank of Steam, but uh, maybe sometime in the future. Yeah, maybe. Did you ever play like strategy games or something? Yeah, of course, a lot. Do you have? Uh, do you remember what was your first strategy game that, that you liked? I think the first game I ever finished was also a strategy game. It was Centurion: Defender of Rome, and I think this was back then. I didn't even have my own computer. I played it on a friend's computer, and I think his mom took the time and she said, "Oh my God, you spent now thirteen hours playing this game." Yeah, wasn't it like early nineties, something like that? Yeah, I mean, the, not that I played those games, but you know, people told me about them. Yeah, it's early 90s, I think, around, yes, and during, I think, it's 1991 or something. It's quite interesting. But it was, for modern standards, it's quite simple. Yeah, and stuff like Panzer General and... Yeah, Panzer General, I actually played the Panzer General 2, which is called Panzer General 3D in German, because I don't know why, because they call Panzer General the Allied General in English, they call it Panzer General 2 in German, because they couldn't try use Alliierte General, I don't know, so it's, so if Germans and Americans are watching or English speaking countries, so these names are mixed up. So it basically see. Panzer General 2 was my major stuff. So you're uh, much more of a turn-based guy than a real time. Yeah, lately I'm, I'm really enjoying Steel Division and also Company of Heroes, but yeah, and House of Iron is also real time strategy, so it's, both, but yeah. yeah. I don't think it gets much better than Hearts of Iron, but again, that's what people told me. Hearts of Iron 3, yeah. I think Hearts of Iron 3 with the Black Eyes more. That is, in my case, the highest level of development we reached. But the, yeah, the AI sucks. It's kind uh, of how about this idea? Are you up for a challenge? 
some game that you pick and then we can play you versus uh, my henchman. Yeah, I think Steel Division would be great. Okay, so maybe in the future we can arrange on a We could a make mess a stream. Up. We could make a stream. I, I, I streamed with Bismarck two times now on Steel Division. Or three times? Yeah, I think three times. Okay, I wonder who will win. Yeah, German and Austrian together, we probably won't win if you look at the historical setup, but yeah, you probably take also a beating if it's historically accurate. Yes, we have a whole uh, bunch of uh, people in Gulag training just for those games, so... But, you have, to, but you have to play with the, with the Allies, not with Russians. <coughs> so, Enbikov, what is your favorite warplane? Uh, well, I know everyone expects me to uh, say something Russian. So, I will not disappoint you! <laughs> Well, I think MiG-221 is a perfect little uh, rocket and uh, the fact it was brought down so many times in so many wars uh, just means people use it the wrong way. And I think Soviets knew perfectly well what they were making, so uh, I happen to like it. That's an interesting interpretation on the losses of the MiG, yeah? I well, maybe the Americans inflated those numbers here and there, who knows, and of course the other users didn't know how to use it, well... Yeah, that's also a problem sometimes, yeah. Uh, what about you? Something from the World, World War Two? Yeah, kinda. So, well, it's... From, from the US planes I would be with the F4U Corsair which is one of my favorite planes, probably because I saw the Black Sheeps series as a very young boy and for, for, the, for the German side of course it's the BF-109 because well, I, it's just... I like it. Yeah, because it's, it was everywhere, much like uh, MiG-21, right? I mean, it may have not been the best, but it was pretty... Yeah, it was from good. the beginning to the end, yeah, yeah. and it's... it's you have to, it's not a turn fighter, it's an energy fighter, so you have to use different tactics and it's more of a challenge and more interesting in that way. True, true story. What about uh, tanks or something else? I mean, if you had to be in one tank to survive a battle of its era, which tank would that be? Oh, a tank to survive and Yeah, I, I probably would go with an um, M1 Abrams because, well, the chances for survival in one of those is pretty high. Okay, to the American but superiority you, right you now. are going against other tanks of that era, so you're, you're not going to get against Tigers. Then it's and then it will be definitely a, an Israeli tank because they put the most empathy as far as I know on cruise survivability. I think the Macau ones, I think the latest is the fur, three or four, 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 four yeah. already, yeah. So basically as far as I know they have the, the highest cruise availability and also their crews are pretty damn well trained too. So I would be probably good company, I mean, I'm not trained right now, so. Would you just hide in the back compartment and then leave the tank when it's hit? I probably won't leave the tank because that it's was probably a good question. That, That's a good answer. <laughs> And what would be your favorite tank? Uh, I guess it's, uh, it depends on the era, right? I mean, yeah. you, you cannot... You're choosing. You, you cannot beat uh, uh, T-34, but uh, if, if we're going to talk about best tank of its era, I do believe that like T-54 is going to be pretty damn hard to beat for its time. Yeah, I'm not really well in that era, but yeah, as far as I know... Because uh, those Western capitalists uh, just didn't have anything that good back then. What, M48? I don't think so. I need to look up that. I, 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 I won't take your words, no offense. Okay, I guess we're just gonna have to uh, talk about that later. 
So, uh, are you actually, when we are with vehicles, and do you actually will review more tank versus tank, for instance, or theoretically, for instance, the Armada against the Abrahams or the uh, Abrahams against the new part 2? I mean, there are many versions of the new part 2. Well, right uh, the thing about the T14 or Armada tank is that just there's not enough information on it. But and more like the Leopard 2 or the Leclerc and uh, Challenger? I guess sometime in the future that's going to happen, uh, a video like that. But as you can see in my video channel, it's going to be like several country versus country videos and then one uh, military hardware comparison video. So it, it, it's not going to be channel mostly uh, focused on military hardware comparison but I'm sure tanks were, were gonna tanks are gonna happen sometime oh, okay interesting yeah maybe even ships I mean people don't like ships the biggest problem people have with ships is you're not comparing so much the ship as a bunch of its subsystems or even planes and when, when you're talking about carriers and stuff like that I mean w w when you compare tanks it's basically you know one system versus the other system. With ships, it's everything from its armament, sensors, aircraft it carries. Yeah, that's an interesting part. It's you know, some people like it, the challenge. I happen to agree, but perhaps it's not as sexy of a topic. It's not simple enough to compare, I think. Yeah, for modern ships, it's quite problematic. I mean, I had some critique where people say, yeah, but you forgot about the damage control, but it was really different in both carriers, and I said, yeah, but damage control to a large degree between the Japanese Navy and the US Navy was dependent on the doctrine and the training of the man, so I didn't put it into the video because it was less about the design feature. Of course, there were some changes made, but the main problem with the damage control was as far as I know, mostly crew training and procedures, how to work it out if yeah. you have damage, because I think the Japanese used a more centralized version of damage control, whereas for the United States Navy it was everyone had the responsibility in the ship, but if I compare two ships and I include that as well with the doctrine, it just blows up and the video is like 50 hours. I know, I have the same problem, I'm trying to have the videos not go over 10 minutes, Sometimes they, they, they will go over, but uh, it's hard to uh, control oneself yeah. when, when writing about all that. And of course you cannot satisfy everyone, so that's why there's always going to be the next video and the one after that, so hopefully everyone is going to find something they like, right? Yeah. Well, then thank you very much for the invitation, Commissar Binkov. No, thank you uh, for bringing us here so we can talk and show ourselves to our fans that we are real and we exist <laughs> and maybe we'll do another of these videos sometime in the future yeah it would be excellent so thank you for watching and see you next time see you next time bye bye